a speech on how to show dogs for the AKC in confirmation. And you are finding sources on how to train your dogs, and that has something to do with what you're demonstrating in this speech. You have a piece of supporting evidence, which ideally you've played with and developed in your annotated bibliography, where you formatted your citation and summarized and analyzed and applied this to your speech. But in this step, you might want to use a fact such as for a dog to champion with AKC, they must be the best example of their breed. Okay, now that's pretty common knowledge. I would say that most people know that. So that wouldn't need to be something that you cited. However, if you were to say for a dog to champion with the AKC, they must earn 21 points at confirmation shows. And I just made that up. Um, that's not common knowledge. That's not something your audience is very likely to know. And so that's an example of when you would need to cite to a credible source of supporting evidence. Now, you are going to do this in your speech in a reference list which will be found at the bottom of the page and will have citations, APA citations, for each of your sources of supporting evidence. However, you also need to remember that your audience is not going to be looking at your preparation outline when you're delivering this speech. So therefore, you're going to need to give them enough information that they could locate this source on their own. And you're gonna do that in two ways. First, you're gonna do this in text verbally. And you're gonna let us know who is the author, what is the title of the source, what year was it published, and where was it published, such as a journal or a book or on a website. How would that look? I'll give you an example. According to, we'll say, first, last name of author in a year, so like 2022, article for AKC Puppy News, and I just made that up, that's the title of a magazine, or it could be the title of a website, titled, and what is the title of the article? And you can put that in quotes, you can put that in italics, as long as you set it off and we know that's what it is. According to first name, last name, and I did that. Or you could do it in a 2022 article for AKC Puppy News titled blah, blah, blah. Oops, author, first and last name, that would be the name, both names of the person that you're citing says. And this is an example of where you do not need to quote this because there's nothing really significant about this information that it needs to be preserved in a quote. This is a great example of where paraphrasing works. Now the other thing that you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to add a parenthetical citation. And this citation points to the citation in your reference list. And all this needs to be is the author's last name and the year. Now, if there's not an author identified, then you would not be able to include author information. And in that case, instead of author information here, um, you can remove it in the in-text citation, but you might quote the AKC as the author of that article. You're going to do this for each source of supporting evidence. And for all of the sources you include in your reference list, you need to make sure you reference them at least once in the outline as supporting evidence for at least one of your main points. 
let's look at now if let's say you had done this but you want to tell your audience more about what it takes to get those 21 points at shows and you want to tell them the kind of sub steps of this that would mean that you would need to move down to the next point level because you are illustrating point C here and you're providing supporting evidence for point C now again remember if you have one point you have to have the second one and each of these should only have one complete sentence again this is so it's really easy for you when you're revising and perfecting your outline and rehearsal to move this information around perhaps you want to move this sentence and lead with that here right or perhaps you decide my speech is too long and I actually don't have time to present all of these subpoints. It's really easy for you then to take them out, right? Because they're just one sentence per point. So you're just removing one idea from your outline. You'll notice here at this point now, we have several different levels going. We have the Roman numerals, which is the first level and they all line up. We then have the capital letters, which notice they all line up. And then we have the one and two. And if we were to add these for other main points, they will still line up at that level for all of the main points. Let me just get this in here and I can show you what I mean. So I'm hitting the tab key there to move over in the outline formatting. So notice that these line up throughout the outline at this level. So what this is telling us when we look at this visually is this is your main point. These are the points, the subpoints that support your main point. And these are sub subpoints that support subpoints. And again, you could have technically an infinite number of subpoints here. But what you want to try to be doing is really well organizing the information so it makes sense for the audience. You'll repeat this process for all of your main points, um, following both the format, but also making sure you include supporting evidence for all of your main points. Now supporting evidence doesn't have to be to a credible source. It could be a uh, it, it, well, it, it should be to a credible source if it's a statistic, a fact, something that's not commonly known. But supporting evidence could also be a story that you share that helped you build your expertise, an experience that you've had. Um, it could be logically connecting your ideas. And there's a variety of different things you could present. But the important part is these subpoints, when looked at together, all are equally important. They have the equal significance um, and they all make up organizationally a part of the main point. And that's true again for all the points at this level, all the points at this level. Once you get your main points done, um, and you'll notice we didn't write the introduction here. You will want to write the introduction and the conclusion after you've written your main points. So let's go ahead and fill in the template for the conclusion. When you give a conclusion for a speech, you want to summarize your main points. Again, similarly to how you previewed your main points here. Today I've talked to you about main point one, main point two, main point three. You want to reinforce your central idea, again, in one sentence. And finally, you want a vivid, memorable ending, or a clincher, as we like to call it. I like to suggest that you make your attention getter and your clincher part, parts of a whole, so that they're like bookends. So maybe you start with a story in your attention getter, you share the conclusion of that here in your clincher. Maybe you ask, ask the audience a question in the attention getter, you share the answer here in your clincher. But in all cases, this clincher should be really strong, really well developed, and really memorable for your audience. Also, note that in summarizing these main points, 
you're reinforcing the main points that you want your audience to remember when your speech is done. Right? Um, and also when you are introducing your topic, purpose, and central idea here, and when you're reinforcing your central idea here, consider using creative language where you're not just reading the central idea statement that you wrote here over and over again. Make it meaningful for your audience. Once you have this rough template, what you'll want to do is put your cursor here and do two line breaks, three line breaks, four line breaks, five line breaks. Now go back up to the middle and you're going to type transition and you're going to italicize this. This is where you're going to write one complete sentence that is a transition that transitions between the ideas here in the introduction, but more importantly lets the audience know that you're starting the body of your speech and you are about to present the first main point to them. It's part of this road map that gives them signals, like traffic signs if you'll think about it. This is what I'm doing, this is what's happening now in my speech. Same thing here, we're going to do a transition because you always want to have transitions between the introduction and the first main point and between all of the main points in your outline. And then we're going to add that last one in here for the main point, final main point. Now you can have other transitions as I'm sure you've read about in your text, you can have internal previews, you can have internal summaries. There's lots of different ways you can use transitions to help your audience better understand the roadmap that you are presenting to them. But this is the basic format for the outline, and, and I'm hoping this helps you better understand why we organize like this and how it helps you in your speech. You'll notice the transitions being italicized and set off here. That helps you when you're practicing from your preparation outline to know I'm transitioning from one point to the other. It helps you use paralanguage like changes in tone, inflection, rate, um, the use of pauses to really punctuate your speech for your audience so they know what's happening. Same thing, you want these main points to be really clear. Main points are the most important items in your outline. So you want them to be distinct and memorable. That's often why people use internal summaries and in speeches is to recap the main points that they've covered and to let the audience understand where they're at in the speech. This final transition between the last main point and the conclusion should very well signal to your audience that the end of your speech is coming. This is actually the point where you command more audience attention than at any other point throughout the speech. If you look at studies, research shows that at this point, everyone starts paying attention more than they've paid attention since the attention getter of your speech. Finally, your reference list. You can read all about this in course resources, how to write an APA citation. You do not need to include annotations for your citation, just the APA style formatted references. If you include a reference in this list, make sure that you have cited it at least once as supporting evidence for a subpoint for one of your main points. This is the basic outline style. I hope this has been a helpful lesson for you, and if you have any questions, please do let me know.